Is this Bitcoin drop already over or are we just getting started? Buckle in, strap in, and strap on. Welcome back everyone, I'm your host Peter Pullback and we have a lot to be jumping into in today's video guys. So without any further ado, let's just jump into these charts. So guys, as we pointed out in yesterday's video, there was bearish divergence on not only the one hour, but also the four and six hour chart. Uh, and it's no shock to anyone that Bitcoin has been absolutely, literally straight vertical lately. So uh, as we've been saying, as in fact, pretty much everyone has been saying, not even for the past few days, for over a week now, that a pullback at some point is to be expected. But the real question now, is this actually a substantial pullback? Is this a pullback that is going to last more than 24, 48 hours? Because at this point, realistically, we have not gotten a pullback that has lasted more than 48 hours in weeks. Uh, and we're going to dive into these charts going from small to higher time frames because there's some very interesting things specifically on some longer time frame charts. But guys, let's take a look at this chart. This is the daily chart. And if we go back to when Bitcoin began going parabolic back uh, pretty much the middle of October, when it was still right around 10,000, 11,000 US dollars, it seems like a lifetime ago. But it was only a few months ago, but uh, yeah, it was about $30,000 ago. So we've come a very long way in a very short amount of time. But if you look on this chart, what is one thing you notice, uh, particularly ever since we had a pretty long consolidation towards the middle of November uh, and kind of the at the beginning of December was that we have not really had more than, we haven't had more than two consecutive red candles uh, in a row since, uh, actually since November 25th. So. Uh, it's been over a month and a half since we've had three consecutive red candles. For the most part, it's been green after green, maybe one red candle thrown in there every once in a while. But for the most part, I mean, just look at this chart. This is literally green. What is this? Like eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, like nine green weekly or nine green daily candles in a row. Then another three green in a row, five or seven green candles in a row. You notice we get a red candle every once in a while. Here we actually got two, then we get one, one. Now we have two here, but here's the big question. Is this actually gonna be a prolonged cooldown, a prolonged pullback like we've been basically hoping for since $30,000, right? Because uh, going straight up forever is not good, right? If we wanna make a lot of money, if we want this bull run to be long lasting and prosperous for Bitcoin and altcoins, ideally you don't just wanna go straight up right? You, you never want to just go only straight up. So this is really good for a lot of reasons, but is this actually going to play out and be even better if we actually continue here? So one key thing here on the daily chart, the thing we want to start off with is we want to get a daily close if we're going to remain bullish in the very short term. And if we're going to keep going up, any daily close basically above 36,500 would enable that. A daily close below that would instantly instantly uh, show us that it's very likely that we could continue going down here over a longer period of time, you know, maybe a sustained pullback, three, four, five, six red candles instead of just green candles. Because for the most part, guys, we've gotten like 95% green candles for the past two months. Only like 5% of these daily candles uh, over the past few months have been red. It's basically only been green candles. So is this gonna continue? And as you notice here on the EMA ribbon, we so far have actually bounced on the EMA ribbon, which is not bearish at all. Uh, if we don't even get a close within this EMA ribbon, roughly about 36,900 US dollars and below, so anywhere below 36,900, then this is barely a pullback, right? If we don't even get a close below 36,900, I wouldn't even really call this a correction. It's a short term, a little dump, but it's really nothing substantial at all yet. If we expect Bitcoin to go lower, it at least has to get down to 37,000, uh, more specifically like 37 or 36,900, which we haven't seen yet. But let's actually go here to the hourly chart. So on the hourly chart, something key did happen. So for the first time in uh, quite a long time, we've actually had, we're setting now a bearish cross with the 21 hourly going below the 50 hourly. You see that cross happening right here. Uh, you see we've at least always bounced on the 21 hourly or 50 hourly moving averages here during this parabolic trend. Uh, but you notice when we do get the cross below, that's when we initiate a decent dump. The only significant dump that we've had in the past few weeks is here. That was actually January 3rd. We go from 35,000 to basically 27,000. But remember, that was bought up basically instantly. We didn't even have a substantial daily red candle there. It was, it was very, very quick. So ultimately, if we wanna see more of a pullback, we wanna come down to this area here, right around 35,000. Now we're gonna talk about more like some, some very long-term big levels 
levels in terms of an actual pullback on this chart in terms of what is the momentum showing on longer time frames but on this hourly chart it's clear the bearish divergence is playing out is it playing out on the four hourly chart uh yeah we're actually starting to see it we haven't had too many confirmations yet aside from the fact that now we're breaking below the 21 the 21 moving average here on this four hour chart which is which was ultimately holding support and you can see that same dump we just talked about on the hourly chart this like seven thousand dollar swing back here this is what it looks like on the four hour chart as you can see this four hour candle basically was immediately bought back up so again it just goes to show you how little that pullback actually was so we didn't even get a single candle close on this four hour chart below this level uh, or this 50 moving average here on the four hour chart which is right about thirty six thousand dollars right now so uh one thing to look for if we're going to get a continued pullback would be first of all we even have to we have to even come down to thirty seven thousand first and then 36, if we would get a four hour, hourly close below 36,000 US dollars, then that would also validate further that we're actually gonna continue momentum here. But keep in mind guys, as I'm recording this, we're not even close to that yet. So ultimately so far, we need to get a hourly close around 37,000 US dollars and a four hour close around 36,000 US dollars if we're gonna see this pullback continue. If we don't get either of those two targets, then this pullback is nothing. Right, so those are the first two things we want to look at. And then on a six hourly chart, this is probably one of the more important ones. The six hour chart, we haven't breached that 21 yet. So we did on both the four and one hour, but on the six hour chart, we're basically right there. We're like a little below it right now, but uh, it, we're basically just sitting right on top of it or right around it. So uh, yeah, if we get a six hour close anywhere below this, we could see this momentum continue basically anywhere below 38,000. But uh, ultimately, yeah, guys, you notice this red 50 moving average here on the six hour chart. It very, very rarely over the past few weeks have we actually come down to this. And that also is right around, this is right around the $34,000 level for Bitcoin. But guys, most importantly, also what we started with this hourly chart, uh, this parabolic trend, we've actually seen Bitcoin find support over and over and over again here. So uh, on this daily chart, as long as we remain above that $36,000 level, this pullback is basically nothing. This isn't even a pullback. Uh, so we, we have this topic of, is this actually gonna be a prolonged pullback where we spend more than just 24 hours uh, in a red red downward position, or is it immediately just gonna get bought back up and we're gonna have new all-time highs again? Because ultimately, if we just keep bouncing along this line, all that is, we're just gonna keep getting new all-time highs. But again, I personally would like to see more of a pullback first because Bitcoin has been outperforming everyone's predictions, right? Bitcoin has been more bullish than anyone was predicting and that's why everyone's readjusting their uh, their predictions there. But ultimately, if we don't even go down to 36,000 US dollars, guys, we're basically gonna be setting new all-time highs very shortly, in my opinion. So uh, this trend is so parabolic that I think there's not a, not a lot of wiggle room to just trade sideways. I think we're in a, somewhat of a crunch, crunch zone where um, we're either going to just continue finding support on this parabolic trend and just keep breaking new all-time highs, or we're gonna have sort of a flash crash that, I mean, most likely will get bought up. Ultimately, we need to start having some hourly, uh, four hour, six hour, and even daily closes below some of these key levels, and they're different on each chart. But there are some indications showing that this actually could be finally the, the beginning of an actual pullback. So if we go down to this weekly chart, this is very key. So just taking this fib retracement from the top of the market, uh, the high from back 2017 to the low here, you can see that we have run into a very key fib, fib level, the 1.414, which is right around 41, 42,000 US dollars, which guys, it's exactly what we hit recently, right around 42 here. This could be a great time for a pullback, but again, we, we already said we don't have the confirmations just yet. This move is too new. We need four, six hourly, uh, daily closes as well to cement anything like this. So it's still playing out. But uh, ultimately, I personally think that if we do, if we do get a rejection here, uh, the lowest we could go in the short term over the next week, thirty-one, thirty thousand dollars is a huge fill level as well. It would be a pretty drastic pullback in terms of what we're seeing, and I think it would fill a lot of the requirements, especially on the momentum oscillators, to hit that target, and then we can continue going up. So, uh, if we did make a move down here to thirty thousand U.S. dollars, again, that would be over a twenty percent move, which uh, twenty to twenty-five, maybe even tops thirty percent during this very strong momentum bull market, it might be the highest corrections we're gonna get. Um, people are talking about a 50, 60, 80% correction. I just don't think we're gonna get those type of corrections this early in the bull market. So yeah, at this point for me, what I'm looking at in terms of an ultimate pullback, if we get it, remember it's still way too early, way too early on these charts. We need all those confirmations that I was talking about on these other charts first. 
But uh, yeah, 23, 25% pullback, which would be roughly to about like 31, 32,000 US dollars, might be the biggest pullback that we theoretically could get right now. So basically, yeah, what I'm saying there is that uh, with all the momentum we're seeing right now, even if we get the biggest pullback that I think makes sense right now, it would still be above 30,000 US dollars. Um, but what's also really interesting too is if we somehow, if we do have that pullback, exactly what I think what would happen uh, following that, you know, over the week after that, is that if we got a substantial pullback, we got some time to reset some of these indicators, it would make the move to break 42 and potentially head up to roughly 60,000 US dollars incredibly likely. So that's actually pretty insane. So from here, from here, that is about a another 40, 45% move uh, from Bitcoin's current price from 40,000 to 60,000 is roughly uh, about 40, another 40% 40 move, which is absolutely wild. But I think that's exactly what would happen if this very, very needed scenario happened where we get a pullback, where we get a move back to about 30, 32 over the next week. Again, guys, still, still way too early. But uh, the reason I like that scenario better is because if we don't, if we don't get a continued pullback, if we just hold right here, let's say we hold at 38, and then we just kind of approach 42 again, yeah, we could we could theoretically, like I said, set another new all-time high within the next 24, 48 hours if we just get bounces where we currently are and we don't even come down to like 37 or 36 if we just bounce where we are right now. But that just makes the potential to swing more explosively higher, I think, a little less. Anybody doing TA will tell you that if we just keep, keep on pushing Bitcoin's price here and just keep setting new all-time highs without any sort of substantial pullback, remember, this daily chart basically has almost no red candles on it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven out of the like last 35 days have been red. The rest have been green. So we've basically only been seeing green. And the longer that continues, the longer that it makes the pullback that's coming more likely to be drastic, more likely to swing very strongly uh, the other way. But again, keep in mind, we do have a lot of people waiting to buy Bitcoin cheaper. So even if we did get a big swing, uh, there is going to be a lot of people fighting that, a lot of people trying to buy that up. So again, the demand is still there, right? Demand is still there no matter what, whether we get a pullback, whether we actually get a pullback down to the low 30,000s or we don't, we're still going to have demand. So that's another thing to, to note there. But I think a lot of people that have been in this space longer would just feel a lot more comfortable if we did actually just start to see more of a divergence here and see Bitcoin separate and actually finally get some sort of a some sort of a pullback. Keep in mind, guys, the biggest pullback we've seen over the past few weeks was here and it was immediately bought up. And I mean, pretty much, I personally think that's exactly what we would see if we did get another pullback, meaning we could get a pretty big swing. Maybe we would swing down to 32,000 US dollars, but that four hour candle might immediately bounce back to, you know, reclaim 70% of that drop within, within a four hour candle, meaning it would get bought up very drastically like it did here. This is what it looks like on the four hour. It looks just like one giant wick because it got bought up so fast. And ultimately, if we did have another move down to, you know, maybe say here, right around 32,000 on this chart, it probably would look very identical to this one where, you know, maybe it'll swing down really fast, but then immediately get bought back up. But in this type of market environment, that might be the best we can hope for in terms of a pullback. And uh, I mean, that is healthy enough that, I mean, we could technically just continue going higher from here on out. But basically, the longer that we just go straight up, the more we risk the chance of us going straight down, okay? But keep in mind, again, it'll be bought up. It'll be bought up probably pretty quickly. But, uh, you know, if you're in this market a long time, you just you just don't always like seeing markets go straight up. It's, it's technically usually not a very not a very great thing to only see the markets go straight up. So I'm hoping that we do hit some of those targets to the downside that we talked about. Wow, so if you guys are new to the channel, make sure to like, subscribe, turn on those post notifications. And for anybody interested in trading these markets, make sure to take advantage of our bonuses below on Bybit. Only if you have experience, only if you want to support the channel, and only uh, put in what you're willing to lose.